will step up to begin the game. Pioneers, of course, wearing the navy and white. Blurley and Sox wearing black and light green. We're closer to a neon, but really nice on the jerseys right there. That one's going to be lined in the middle for a base hit and gets all the way down into the gap. In fact, he's actually just going to roll in for a double. Now Kinley gets this game started with a base hit. On defense for the Pioneers, Brody Bartenstein alongside Mason Smith forms the battery. At third base, Johnny Wall. Shortstop, Kyle Shimoleski. At second base, Aiden Blake. And at first base, it's Jani Vaughn. Although I actually do think I might have gotten one thing. Needed to set that in the infield. Yep. Wall at third, and by the way, Justin Hanley, if I would mentioned him, he's actually the extra hitter. And first pitch outside, ball one to the new batter here. No one out, top of the first. Thank you to C-Tran for being this inning sponsor of the Amira Pioneers. You can learn more about their accessible transit at chmungtransit.com. Also, just as a reminder, if a stream ever goes down, the full replay will be up on YouTube afterwards. So, just to always keep that in mind. 2-0 now for Mason Smith to Lovejoy, who steps up now for his first at-bat. That one inside. And they'll just give him the free base. So, Cody Lovejoy gets aboard with four pitches. Cody Lovejoy, formerly at Texas State. He'll now be on first as Hurt will step up. Here's the first pitch from Mason Smith. That one's inside, but on the corner, strike one. It's actually the first successful strike we've seen from Mason Smith today. And, oh, actually, I missed it. Everyone else missed it. Bartenstein missed it. McKinley steals third. Runners at the corners. No one out. That one fouled back. Count now 0-2 for Hurt. O2. Can Derek Hurt respond here? And he's going to tip that one away, so he'll stay alive. O2. Runner goes. And that will be fouled away. Jane Ivon, not able to get to it, goes off the dugout. Derek Hurt, while with the Maryville Scots, had. A 314 average, a 416 OBP, and a 522 slugging for his career in 71 games. With that wild pitch, that's ball one. Runners will now both get in scoring position. Now on second and third. Kinley was already on third. Lovejoy is now on second. So Derek Hurt, the 5'9 outfielder, tips that one. Ooh, that tips off of him. He'll get on base, and the bases are loaded. Slow start here for the Pioneers, but they are facing some pretty strong talent. It'll be up to Mason Smith to work his way out of the jam. The good news as well for the Pioneers, though, it's a very low stakes game. It won't affect their PGCBL playoff hopes. It simply gives a nice tricky test for the Pioneers, and also 
of course, because it was previously going to be against the Capital City Reds. Fortunately, there are some issues that prevented those games from happening. 0-1. Pod call up now. That one's going to be driven. Deep center field. And gets down behind, and that will likely clear the bases. It'll be a standing double for Podkul. One run, two run, and three runs will score. So Podkul, with a standing double, will bring home the first runs of the game. It's a 3-0 Washington lead. Of course, the Pioneers' previous game they did a similar thing against the Newark Pilots as they were ultimately able to win. Okay, cool. And there's a bee flying around the camera to try to make things worse for the Pios here. They're trying to, uh, that bee's trying to interrupt the broadcast. But of course, last night, or two nights ago on the first, the Pioneers went into Newark and exited in five innings, a 13 to nothing victory, their largest margin of victory in the season, and second most runs scored in the game. Now that is going to bring up Markman up. And ball one just inside. Of course, tomorrow night you can also check out the, out the Pioneers again. They'll be having another interleague game before returning to PGCBL action here at home against the Auburn Double Days on the 5th. That one's going to be lined up the middle and a base hit. It's a sharp grounder. Podkul. He's able to get home. That throw from center field won't get there in time. An RBI single to make it 4-0. All runners that have gone in base have come home and scored. That time just a well-hit ball that's too hard to field. Race will step up and here comes Billy Wildeman. And I have a feeling he's just going to tell Mason Smith to settle down. Obviously, Pios will want to try to stay in the game and fight back, and they've got plenty of time to do so. But obviously, not the world's greatest start. We know how good Mason Smith is, and we know he can settle down, and hopefully he will be able to. Seven twenty tonight, a nice warm night here in Elmira. And the game will resume now. Tyler Reese steps up now. He played at Waynesburg for his four college seasons from 2016 to 2019. And he's going to take ball one just outside. That one's going to be popped deep but foul. Good attempt there from Pio's players, but no one will be able to come up and find it. One and one. And of course, I'll just mention it again, even though it'll probably be asked, will this game affect the PGCBL standings or official record? Nope. The Piles will definitely be keeping track on the quotation mark record, these games, but they won't affect the Pio's chances of making the playoffs. However, for bragging rights, and because this Pio teams will want to win, they might not be super happy with the slow start. But now the infielder, the second baseman ready to go. 2-1. That one's going to be popped up. J9 Vaughn able to get under it. And oh, we can't get it. The sun, I think, a little bit too bright as it's setting here. And the count will go 2-2. Two and two. 
And it is a pretty bright sun tonight. It can be very hard to see those balls. Driving on the way here as well, it was pretty bright out. Two, two. That one's high, ball three. Barton Steen can't frame that one. And ball four. It's a full count, a race, works, a walk. That'll put two aboard again. Still no one out. We do have a little activity in the Pio's bullpen. But I know they're going to want to try to at least help Mason get through the inning. Taylor Olmstead steps up now. Previously, he had gone to Southern New Hampshire University. So he fouls that one back, 0-1. Say though, it's been a fun week or a fun weekend, at least day for Pioneers fans and especially the families of the players who've come up to visit over this parents weekend. Also, keep in mind tonight there will be fireworks after the game. Make sure you stay tuned for those. Now, here's the 0-1 to Olmstead. And they're gonna call that strike two. Smith able to get ahead. Can Olmstead get out of the at bat here and try to help the Pio's cause? And yes, he does. Get some looking. That strikeout is the first out of the inning for the Pioneers, and also is first strikeout for Mason Smith. That will now bring up Yuta Okazaki. Now, he and Joe Muzio share something in common. They both used to play in the Sunshine State Conference, Okazaki originally, at Rollins way back in 2013 and 14. And a pretty solid time there. And oof. On the 1 0, he gets plunked. That one just slipping away from Mason Smith. That'll load the bases. With one out. All force outs will help the Pioneers. Uh, it's still not the start they definitely wanted. Spencer Henn will step up. He's the nine hitter. And by the way, the Brilliant Sox are only running nine players. Here's the first pitch for Henn. Takes it low, strike one. Third baseman from Miami University, Hamilton. That one outside, ball one. Ooh, big swing and a miss there. Mason Smith able to fool hen that time. And now the one, two, swing and a miss. He's got his second strikeout and now two away with the bases loaded. So 
So McKinley will get his second at bat today. He had a double on his first at bat, and ah, gets by Aiden Blake. Had a shot to get the final out of the inning. Now put runners at the corners and score two. That was a line drive that just was missed barely by Blake. Now bring a two RBI single. That'll bring up Lovejoy. Lovejoy always scored after walking in his first at bat. Now runners are at the corners and it is a six nothing lead for the Brilliant Sox. Now the good news for the Pioneers, they haven't had a chance to bat yet, which means they very well could try and score six runs of their own in an inning. They had scored four runs, five runs, and four runs in the three innings they got runs against New the Newark Pilots. That was high, ball one. So definitely plenty of time. But let's see what Lovejoy can do in this at bat. Bartenstein throw to second, and they are gonna no! It's a 1-2 count, so two strikes at two away, but it looked like he caught him stealing that time. I'll definitely say I think that was the wrong call, but still good throw from Barton Scene, good tag by Aiden Blake. Can Mason Smith get out of this? That one's fouled away. One, two to Lovejoy. That one's going to be flared and foul. Potentially grabbed over by the Pio's dugout. One, two. High, ball two taken there. Three, two now, it's a full count. They've got one base free. But I know Mason Smith will just want to get out of it. 3-2. That one's going to be popped up. A chance. Bartenstein cannot get to it. It's just in foul territory. So of the 3-2 one more time. Three, two, and strike three, they call him out. So, it took a little while, but Mason Smith is able to strike out the side. And with that, the Elmira Pioneers are able to strand two runners for the Brilliant Sox, but their offense does bat around in the first inning. They score six runs on four hits with no errors. And now it'll be time to see Casey Grimm take the mound and if the Pioneers can respond. We'll be right back with more Pioneers baseball. Thanks again to Citran.
Bottom of the first, the Pioneers trailing, but they've got a chance to try to get some offense going. Casey Grimm will take the mound. He's the starting pitcher for the Washington Brilliant Sox. It's Parents Weekend Sunday night game. We've got some fireworks afterward as well. Leading off for the Pioneers, Zach Odom. So Grimm, the lefty, ready to go. That one's going to be driven. Deep center field, but not deep enough to clear the outfielder. Out number one. But a good hit there. Modem, positive sign for the Pioneers. That's going to bring up Ethan Herrera. He's in left field tonight and batting second. And strike one. Strike two. Herrera already down 0-2 against Grimm. Outside, ball one. So Grimm has recently played with the Florence Yalls, and we can see some of his stuff as he gets Herrera looking on that 1-2 pitch. Two away here for the Pios. By the way, thank you, Salins, for being the sending sponsor for the Elmira Pioneers. Official hot dog that you can always get here at Dunn Field. That's going to bring up Johnny Wall as the three-hitter. Oh, oh, count for Johnny Wall. Strike one. That one low, ball one. But of course, we've seen a few of the players on this team playing in some MLB affiliated leagues from time to time. But this one, of course, popped up in Casey Grimm with a clean first inning. Well, Herrera and Odom go down. And we'll be back with more Pios baseball. Of course, the big question is, is who will be up next? Well, Brilliant Sox do up. Hurt, Podkel, and Markman, the trio, two for two with a hit by pitch. So, that'll be interesting to see how this inning goes. And it does look like we might see a new pitcher for the Pioneers. Indeed, Logan Scheider will step on the mound. More Pios baseball after this. Second inning is ready to get underway. I figured I should use this time to thank all our sponsors since I actually wasn't able to last night because the game had ended too early in Newark. Anyway, thank you to AJ's Outdoor Power Equipment, Arkish Among Skyler, Arnett Health, Big Fox, Blaze Brockway Contracting, Bill Electric, Buckley's Automotive, Bully Hill Vineyards, Catholic Charities, Chemung Canal Trust, Clement Center, Coca-Cola, Katie Mini Marts, Elm Chevy, Elmira Heat Treating, 
the Elmira Junior Enforcers, Firefly Adventure Retreat, First Transit, Clubhouse, Hardinge, Heroes Comic Shop, Hilliard, Jubilee Foods, Just in Time, NNT Bank, NYSCO PBA, Office Equipment, OPWDD, Papa John's, Pinecroft Golf Course, Salins, Save a Lot, Seneca Beverage, Service Master, Serve Pro, Shedden's Wholesale, Simmons Rockwell, Slam and Jam and Barbecue, Solutions FCU, Southern Tier Custom Fab, Suburban Propane, SUNY Corning, Susan mentioned DDS, The Cakery, Chill Get Down, Today Special, Town of Tom's South Corning, Tower Broadcasting, ooh, that one high and inside, the first pitch slipping away, nearly hitting Hurt, he ducks out of the way, 1 and 0, oh. As we were at, of course, Town South Corning, Tower Broadcasting, Town of Southport, Turtle Leaf, the US Navy, Value Homes, Vasco, Vasco Brands, Waste Markets, and Wilbur Auto. Thank you again to all those sponsors for making the Elmira Pioneer season possible. Now, the two to hurt. He's going to line that and foul the first third base coach, actually having to dive out of the way that time. 2 1. Of course, this is definitely going to be one of the tougher games for the Pioneers, but they can also rest assured that if this does turn into a loss, it won't hurt them in terms of PGCBL standings. And Blake gets under it for the first out of the inning. One away here. See a couple of rotations, but you do see quite a few of the Pioneer starters in play. Players like Johnny Wall, Luke Spruby, Brody Bartenstein, and even and Zach Odom have all played multiple games this season and been very active. Others have also played some games. Last night, Jay Nye Vaughn, or two nights ago, in Newark, we saw Jay Nye Vaughn back in the lineup. We also saw some others as well. That one fouled backward, one and one. Another interesting player out there. I believe he is playing in right field tonight, Eric Sharnetsky. He had played catcher recently in one of the games for the Pios, proving he can be a very active player throughout the lineup. And now a 1-2 count to Podkul. For, for Podkul. Podkul, he had an or two RBI, sorry, a bases clearing double last time with bases loaded and... He held up, barely 2-2. They needed to check at first base, but he didn't go. So already with three RBIs under his belt, Shader might want some revenge for Mason Smith, 2-2. And side ball three, so full count now to Podkul. That one's going to be driven. Deep left field. And gets down in the gap. It will be extra bases again for Podkul. And it looks like he will settle with a double. One away, one on. By the way, this is a sponsor, Multimedia Services, the official printer for your Elmira Pioneers. They provide all our signage out in center field, so thank you again to Multimedia Services. That one's going to be driven right field and foul 0-1. And that one almost gets away, but Bartenstein stays in front, one and one. And now the count, one and two, with that pitch on the outside corner.
One, two. Outside, ball two. Good take there from Markman. Three and two to Markman. And ball four. He'll get on base with a walk. Now runners on first and second. Tyler Reese steps up. A one. That one's outside. One and one. That one's going to be driven. Deep left field, but it will be shallow enough to get. And that will be the second out of the inning. Two away now. First pitch, ball one. Taylor Holmstead returns to the plate for his second at-bat. He struck out as the first out of the first inning in his previous at-bat. One and one. Fouled away now, one and two count, one more strike. And Scheider can get out of the inning without surrendering a run. That could be huge here. That one's outside, two and two. Runners go, and it, as it gets away from Bartenstein, so the runners will advance. Both now in scoring position with two away. Swing and a miss. Shader gets out of the inning with the strikeout. Strong inning for the Pioneers, surrendering just one hit, one walk, and stranding both runners. More Pioneers baseball right after this. Do up in the second inning, Vaughn, Shimoleski, and Sharnetsky. Although Sharnetsky is right before Shimoleski.
Bottom of the second, this inning sponsor, Papa John's. Make sure you get yourself a slice of pizza whenever you're at Dunfield or outside the stadium. Vaughn's first pitch going to be fouled away 0 and 1. He'll be kicking off this inning. Swing and a miss 0 2 now. That one now, one and two, good take from Vaughn. And he'll get it aboard for a base hit. And that is a great hit from Jani Vaughn to try to get the Pio's offense into action. The first hit like here against Casey Grimm. One on, no one out. And that's going to bring up Eric Sharnetsky. The number 22. Sharnetsky, swing and miss. On one. Jernetsky's really a man of a lot of talents. He can do a lot on the field, play at multiple positions. He's even featured at catcher before. He's now down 0-2 against Grimm. Grimm's already had a pretty strong start. He struck out Herrera and also forced two quick outs. It was Jane Ivon who finally got on base, the first Pioneers base runner here in the bottom of the second. Swing and a miss, so he's going to go down swinging for the first out. Kyle Shimoleski steps up for his first at-bat. Now say I was actually able to meet his parents before the game, and they gave me a very thoughtful gift. I really appreciate it. I already took a look at a few of the things inside, and I know I'll be enjoying some of that beef jerky and some of the other snacks later. And I just want to, of course, they mentioned they would be listening in, so I wanted to give them another thank you here live on stream. But now let's see what Kyle can do. Oof, just chops that one low. Strike one. But now Shimoleski ready to go here with one on, one out. That one's going to be popped up. The light not blinding enough in right field. So that'll be a fly out for the second out of the inning. Disappointing, but some good contact there from Shimoleski. It's going to be Aiden Blake's turn now. He's playing at second base tonight. That one, low, ball one. A good take there from Blake. Blake is going to drive that one into the gap. And that's going to be a huge base hit. Vaughn's going to round third and head to home. No, he's going to turn back. Ah, shame, but he probably would have been out. They were getting the ball very quickly. But it is a double for Aiden Blake, and that'll put two runners in scoring position. Here comes Justin Hanley with two away. I'll say, Hanley, we need you bad. Get some offense going for the Pios. 
There might be a few less people at the stream, of course, tonight because a lot of them are here in Elmira at Dunfield. If you're watching the stream, the only question is, why aren't you? Rhetorical question, of course, but if you're planning to head up to New York, planning to be in the area, we'd love to have you at Dunfield. You can always write that number and call that number down during the inning breaks. Now, first pitch for Hanley. Strike one, takes that one relatively down the middle. A one. Swing and a miss, 0-2 oh, now. Grimm looking to get out of the inning without surrendering a run. One more strike away. Can Hanley keep alive in the at-bat? That one gets away, but Vaughn stays put, one and two. The Brilliant Sox had a very strong start here. But I think it's settled down. Got a little closer. Allen's outside, ball two. And that one gets in the dirt. And the 2021 USCAA Player of the Year will get out of the inning with his third strikeout of the game. Two runners stranded on two hits for the Pioneers. Still a 6-0 Brilliant Sox lead. More Pioneers baseball right after the break. And reminder, tomorrow night more interleague action. And on June, July 5th, the Pioneers return to Dunfield to face the Auburn Double Days. Thank you to Mets Candy Company. This is a sponsor of the Elmira Pioneers. Now we're ready to go in the bottom of the or top of the third inning. It's going to be Yuta Okazaki or leading off now. That one painted the outside corner. Strike one. Okazaki was hit by a uh, by a pitch in his first at bat. 
That was low, ball one. Now we'll say for Shader and the other Pioneers players, Okazaki will definitely be a test. He had previously played some minor league baseball with the Braves. Only a few games, but can brag that he boasted a 30, 333 average in the minors. So very impressive stuff indeed. So now the Brilliant's catcher ready to go here. The 2-1, he's going to line that hard and a good grab there by Shimoleski. But, oh, Vaughn just falls off the bag. He had to go full split to make the catch, and that was the reason he just slipped off the bag. Tough play there. That'll be graded as an error, I believe, on Shimoleski, which is a shame. Very well made play, but Okazaki did a great job of running it out. And I think that's also one of the big things to know as well. You always got to run it out because you'll never know when a player will slip off a bag or a throw will go wild. Got to show effort on the base pads. Something the Pioneers have definitely done quite often. But always a good reminder because that looked like a sure out. Now, Hen will step up. He's struck out in his first at bat. That one's going to be driven. Deep left field. Outfielders going back. And they'll make the catch at the warning track. One away. Good catch. Out in left field, it is, of course, Ethan Herrera. He's pitched a little for the Pioneers, and he's also showing some outfield prowess, too. Always good to have players that can do both. McKinley back up now. Top of the order. This is his third at bat tonight. Has a double, a single. He's just a triple and home run away from the cycle. And that will be tipped away one and one. Pickoff attempt, Okazaki back safely. That time, strike two. With one away, a chance for Shader to get another strikeout. And strike three on the outside corner. He goes down for the second out. <whistles> Two away with a man on first. That'll bring up Lovejoy. He struck out in his previous at bat. Walked in another. And low ball one. Watches that one, a 2-0 no count. <laughs> 2 and 1 now. The throw there from Bartenstein. Oof. Tipped down by Blake. Nearly got into the outfield, but I will say he did a good job to keep in front of it. Okazaki steals second. Count now two and two. With two away. There he goes. He gets another strikeout. 
to end the inning. That is two strikeouts for Ader. Surrendering just one runner that got stranded on an error. Thanks again to Demet's Candy Company. More Pio's baseball right after the break. Casey Grimm returns to the mound here in the bottom of the third, and I will say he's definitely a tough test for the Pioneers. Well, he has been playing in the Frontier League. And in fact, back in 2021, he was preparing a final season in the Great Lakes Summer Collegiate League, not too similar, uh, not too different from our own PGCBL, with his baseball career up for question. However, on June 29, he got a phone call, and after that phone call went well, he was part of the Florence Yalls and has been with them and also now here with the Brilliant Sox. It's definitely a very strong caliber talent, and he's been tough for the Pioneers to crack so far. One and one now to Lucas Berube. He's playing DH tonight and opens up the inning. That one's outside, ball two. That one's going to be grounded over to third. And that will be a play at first for the first out of the inning. One away, that'll bring up Brody Bartenstein. Bartenstein and Odom do up. But first, the catcher for the Piles to get his shot this time around. Here's the first pitch for Bartenstein. Strike one on the outside corner. By the way, Vasco Brands is this inning sponsor for your Elmira Pioneers. Thank you again to Vasco Brands. And if you ever do require their janitorial services, just let them know the Pioneers sent you. One and one here to Barton's team. That one's going to be grounded a short. The throw to first on time and on target. Two away. Pioneers getting some balls in play, but just not enough Babbitt luck to get on. Two away now. Zachary Odom returns. He had a good hit on his first at bat. A deep fly ball, but it was out. First pitch to Odom, swing and miss, strike one. 
Pilot's bullpen, I believe, is currently empty. Shader will be definitely be good to go for a few more innings. That one's high. Ball two. Or one. Two one now to Odom. Strike two on that low corner. Two and two. That one's low ball three. So we're going to see Odom just working this deep count. Question is, can he eventually get on base? And of course, a reminder, if ever a stream dies midstream, the full replay of the game will be available on YouTube afterwards. Odom is able to get aboard with a walk. That'll bring up Ethan Herrera, who struck out in his first at-bat. First pitch to Ethan in the zone, strike one. Swing and a miss, strike two there. Fooled by the off speed, can Herrera recover? We've seen him make some good plays out in left field. Can he get him going on the base path? Ethan Herrera, need you bad. 0 oh, 2 2 away. Just inside, ball one. Swing and a miss, and that will be the inning. That's the fourth strikeout of the game for Grimm. And the side is retired. One runner stranded on a walk. More Pioneers baseball will be back right after this. Thanks again to Vasco Brands. So we're ready to go, the top of the fourth now, back at Dunfield. And hello again, I'm Taylor Storthy, and you're watching Elmira Pioneer Baseball. Hurt will lead off. And again, we'd like to thank anyone who's tuning in as a fan of the Brilliant Sox. 
Ox, and we'd like to thank the Brilliant Sox as a team as there's a line drive to center field for a base hit on the ground. For stopping by Elmira and helping out, the Pioneers had scheduled some games with uh, the Capital City Reds, but a lot of those games ultimately got postponed or canceled. And some of those open spots, including here on Parents Weekend, needed to be filled. And thankfully, we we're able to bring the Washington Brilliant Sox here to town. And they are giving the Pioneers a good show. And again, they've had some MLB caliber talent. They've had some very strong caliber talent, as you can take a look at the scoreboard. And I definitely think it's great that the Pioneers can really get a challenge tonight. It could technically be called a tune-up game. But still, a tune-up can always be important as the Pioneers look to challenge for the four seed and get into the playoffs in the second half of the PGCBL season. So nightlight tonight can definitely be a test. But also, it's not just for the players tonight. It's for the parents who've come out in full force to Dunfield. There's a big presentation pre-game with the players, as there's a swing and miss strike too. And of course, over time, we've also seen some here. I've chatted with a few of them. I already mentioned about Kyle Chimaleski's parents and their really nice gift they got me. And thank you again, of course. They mentioned they'd be listening. That's why I wanted to bring that up here. Runner goes. Throw from Bartonstein. Not in time. That was just a very good jump from Hurt. Count now two and two. It's a good on-target throw from Bartenstein, but Hertz jump beat it. Not a surprise to see him try to go with the two-strike count. See him taking a lead. Fouled away. This inning's sponsor is the healthcare provider for your Elmira Pioneers, Arnett Health. Two two. High, ball three. Podkul, he's got two doubles today. And also three RBIs from back in the first inning. If he repeated a double, he'd certainly bring home another. That one's going to be driven. Deep left field. I'm not sure if that's going to be a double. And he actually, it's not going to be a double. Ethan Herrera came up with it. The wall is a little bit of a blind spot for spotting balls. But Herrera, he's able to see and make the catch. One away. What a play. Hurt will be back at second. He might have been able to tag up, but I think he was thinking that that was getting to the wall. So he eventually just had to get back. Now with one away, here comes Markman. Ball one up high. I actually will say I need to double check if I'm pronouncing that name correctly. M Make Makeman? I believe it's Makeman actually. Outside, ball two. No, Mark Mann. Oh, there it is. It is. Mark Mann with two ends. It was a bit hard to tell. And oof. That one inside. The count now 3-0. and Strike one. But Markman today, he's one for one with a walk and single. Strike two now. So great job there to work the count full from Shader fighting back. There is activity in the bullpen, so this will probably be his final inning. Unless they want to give him one more in the top of the fifth, but I have a feeling they won't. And they get him on the pickoff there, but the throw to wall is not accurate enough. So Hurt will get to third. Not sure how that's going to be graded, whether it's an error or stolen base or anything. 
I'll tell you, that's definitely not a balk as I hear my people over to the left in the booth who run the scoreboard, point streak, and all the other stuff talking about it. That one's going to be driven deep to center field. And that'll be the second out of the inning. Hurt will tag up and stroll on over home. We'll be right back one second. Just wanted to make sure the wasp that was hanging around here was getting away. Apologies for that. Two away now. But it's now a 7 nothing game. That's the first run surrendered by Shader. And a little bit of a shame, but he's had a very good outing so far from the bullpen. That was just a deep sack fly that you can't do much about. Strike one now taken by Reese. Be a little slower updating that graphic really quickly since the off is still just settling around. Oh, one. Oof. That one's very far inside. One and one. And there it is. Seven nothing. One one now to Tyler Rice. Today, 0 for 1 with a walk. He would score on the walk. He wouldn't on a fly out. He'd have in a second at that. That one, ball two, two and one now. That one's low, ball three. It's got need to also make it two away. And ball four. Second walk of the game. That is going to bring up Taylor Olmstead. So, Olmstead. You know, he's had a little bit of experience in the PGCBL. A former Utica Blue Sox player. So he takes strike one right here with a runner aboard. Of course, we know the Utica Blue Sox is a division powerhouse this season. But back when Olmstead made his debut with the team, they were nothing more than a league minnow. However, he quickly made a name for himself in Utica and is remembered among their greats. Olmstead now pops that one up. Will it end the inning? Bartenstein trying to get under it. Vaughn trying to get under it. Neither can get it. 1-2. And again, there is two away. I don't know why I clicked zero for that. Hundred thirty two hits, eighty three runs, eighty one RBIs, eleven home runs and hundred thirty one games. And the number twenty that he wore with the Utica Blue Sox was retired. Now here's the one two. Swing and a miss. The Utica Legend goes down swinging for the third time this game. He actually is 0 for three now with three strikeouts. That'll be the fourth inning with a walk, a single, and a run. One left on, one scored. No errors. More Pioneers baseball after the break. Thanks again to Arnett Health.
Bottom of the fourth now. Pioneers back. Here's Johnny Wall leading off. He's going to face off against Casey Grimm. First pitch now to Johnny Wall. Takes ball one. That one's going to be popped backward and foul. That's a roof souvenir, one and one. Low, ball two. Two and one. Three and one outside. Wall able to work himself ahead. He popped out in his first at bat. There's been some action in the bullpen for the Blearley and Sox. So wouldn't be surprised they look to make a change here for Grimm. That one's going to be grounded to first. And he's just going to keep it himself one away. Jay and Ivon steps back up at the plate with one away now. By the way, thank you, First Transit, being this inning sponsor for your Elmira Pioneers. One away now. Vaughn swing and miss. That one's low, ball one. And I will say for the Pioneers, a lot of these players are future baseball hopefuls. It's always good to play against people that have made it to higher levels and propose some serious talent and challenges. Fouled away, one and two now for Vaughn. One to two. Fouled away. Vaughn had a single in his first at bat, and it was the first hit of the game for the Pioneers. That one's going to be grounded. Foul. Now the 1-2 to Vaughn. Swing and a miss. Okazaki back on it. That'll be the second out of the inning. I will say, this hasn't been the best offensive night for the Pioneers. This actually looks like we're going to get a pitching change. Yep. He gets a handshake. I believe it's manager Joe Torrey, and I'm also 99% sure it's not the Joe Torrey you might think of when you first hear that name, but rather the Joe Torrey who's been working with the Brilliance team for the past couple seasons. He goes out and shakes Grimm's hand. A good outing for him. I definitely wish him the best of luck with this season with the Brilliance Sox, and there will be a bullpen change. Eric Sharnetsky will step up with two away now. 
And we'll get you that number in a second. And it's number 45, Andrew Kramer, who will get a chance now. So with that, it's three and two thirds done and dusted for Grimm. Kramer previously at Salisbury University and Lock Haven. And I believe he's also with the Florence Yalls. But of course, playing tonight here with the Brilliant Sox. Now two, so now we go to the bottom or top of, sorry, bottom of the fourth, two away now. Sharnetsky will be the first test for Kramer. Inside, ball one. One oh. Sharnetsky's gonna pop this one up. And that is dropped. And Sharnetsky is gonna get to second. Safe. So an error in left field lets Sharnetsky get on the scene. That's a two out base hit. He gets the second. Just dropped in left field. That's going to bring up Kyle Shimaleski. And let's see if he can now try to bring him home. First pitch to Shimaleski inside, ball one. That one's popped up, and that should end the inning unless we see another error. Nope, the catch will be made, and that will retire the side. One runner stranded on one error. Aiden Blake, Justin Hanley, and Lucas Bruby will be due up, to, up for the fifth inning, but for now we've got the top half to deal with and a potential change for the Pioneers. We'll have to wait and see, but anyway, more Pioneers baseball right after the break.
Now the Pioneers, they may be trailing seven to nothing tonight, but at the very least, the batters can say that they're not the Jupiter Hammerheads. Around the baseball world, Jacob deGrom is making a rehab start. He pitched one and two thirds for the St. Lucie Mets, and he had five strikeouts. And if you can do the math, that's, um, that's a strikeout for every single batter. <laughs> so, Pioneers are going to have a chance to go. Kevin Serrano takes over on the mound. Shader completes three innings of one run ball, a very solid relief appearance. Okazaki, who is currently 0 for 1 with a hit by pitch and got on base via error in the 0 for 1 at bat, he'll lead off now against Serrano. That one's inside, ball one. We already mentioned sunset coming soon. The lights are already on out in the outfield. By the way, this inning sponsor, Texas Roadhouse. Swing and a miss. Oof. He wanted to take that ball out of Dunfield and instead is wound up like a corkscrew there. Good stuff <laughs> from Kevin Serrano. Serrano does have to be careful, though. One, two. So even though he's ahead in the count, Noah Kazaki can get that pop behind his bat and make the outfield scramble. Take the infield dive and get on with a base hit. One, two. That one's high and inside. Two and two. Okazaki, Hen, and McKinley do up. It'll be the fourth time up from the top of the order at the end of the inning at minimum. That one's low, ball three. So Kazaki is now on a full count. And now we see some fireworks while in center field. They're not the official fireworks. In fact, let me see if I can get them in view if we see a couple more. That one's fouled away. But you can see, I think, a little smoke out there if it register on the camera from those two fireworks. I'll just keep it up in case they want to launch a few more. Figure I might as well let you see the fireworks show. That one's going to be grounded. Picked up by Blake. Throw to first is just in time. Hen will step up now with one away. And again, Texas Roadhouse is this inning sponsor of the Pioneers. That sign out in right field, you'll see it. If a Pio hits it, well, everyone will go home with an appetizer. Parents' night would be a or family night, and parents' weekend would be an amazing night to do it. Easier said than done for the Pios. Now here's the pitch from Kevin Serrano, strike one. So one away here in the top of the fifth, and of course, as of what I've heard, nine inning game. Let's do have plenty of place baseball to go, and again, remember tomorrow night I don't have the exact team we're going to be facing yet. I can double check, but. Pioneers will be playing again in another interleague game. And on July 5th, Pioneer Baseball will be back at Dunfield again. All games are going to be at Dunfield. But this time with PGCBL play against the Auburn Double Days. That was a pretty eventful game the first time these two teams faced. And I have a feeling it will be eventful again. Three and one. Fouled away. Count now full with one away. And swing and a miss. Kevin Serrano gets his first strikeout on that full two count. The Pioneers, as a unit, have actually been able to chain together seven strikeouts. Sorry, eight strikeouts tonight. So I will say, good stuff from the mound overall. 
fact, Mason Smith in his one inning, he actually did strike out the side. That's also interesting too. A one count. One and one. That one's going to be popped up, and that could end the inning. Vaughn under it. Instead, it's going to be Aiden Blake. The side is retired. Serrano goes one, two, three. And Elmira's got a chance to try to climb back in the bottom of the fifth. However, Washington still leads 7-0. Bottom of the fifth underway. Pioneers, not the best night for them. But of course, a reminder, not a PGCBL game. This won't get in the way of them making the playoffs. Instead, this is a chance for the Pioneers to tune up against some professional talent from the Frontier League, former M minor leaguers, and others. The Brilliant Sox have a very nice hodgepodge of players. That one fouled away. So it'll be an interesting test for the Pioneer lineup chosen tonight. For Mason Smith, he unfortunately got the brunt of some hot bats in the first inning. Meanwhile, Logan Shader and Kevin Serrano have been able to keep him quiet throughout the next four. Count now 0-2 with that breaking ball, dropping in and catching Blake off guard. One and two. Two and two, good take there from Aiden Blake. So far today, Blake, he's got a double, and that's it. Pioneers still getting around their second time in the order. Is that a, looked like a moth for a second. That one is gonna be a fly ball deep to left field. However, it's going to be tracked down and the catch will be made. Not even a very buggy night. It's just a few larger bugs flying around here. I will say, Dunfield, historic Dunfield, what a beautiful stadium it is. But unfortunately, it's right by a river. And generally, there's a lot of flies and things hanging around from time to time. A couple nights, you can sometimes see the lights and see a lot. But my theory is just, they're just big fans of baseball. And you know what? I can mind flies if they like baseball. Here's the first pitch to Hanley. He's going to line that one to right. But tracking back and making the easy catch out there will be McKinley for the second out. Now here comes Lucas Bruby with two away. Thank you to Clarion in this inning's sponsor, the Choice Hotel of your Elmira Pioneers. Bruby grounded out his first at bat. He's got the Seinfeld theme.
Ruby pops that one backward. 0-1. Oh, great. And this is the portion where the live stream ended. So, if you're picking up the game here, there's the 0-2 count now. 1-2, actually. It was a ball. That one's going to be grounded. And, ooh, he's going to get by Kramer. But right on it is the second baseman. And that'll be the final out of the inning. Pioneers go down in order. 1-2 more time. That's the bottom of the fifth inning. More Pies baseball after this. Pioneers fan question. Toronto warm up. We'll be right back. I forgot to change to off air. Lovejoy leads off, first pitch taken, strike one. We'll fix up the graphics, had to spray a little more off as things get a little more buggy tonight. But yeah, we've got a new hotspot that'll hopefully fix some of our situations and things. And actually, there was a hit by pitch. Lovejoy gets aboard to open the inning. I will say, very fast pace of play, which is helpful. Keeps the game moving. But a little bit annoying if, you know, I ought to step out for a second and find myself falling behind. One away here. No one out, actually. Runner on first. Lovejoy stays. First pitch inside. Ball one. More fireworks. Not sure where they are, whether left or right. There will be fireworks after the game, but unfortunately I'm not uh, going to be able, since the stream died... I don't think I'll record them since uh, it did. Also because, you know, most of the viewers are just at the game. If you're viewing this game afterward, you most likely already saw it in person. So, uh, yeah. And I do apologize. I'm kind of being a little more candid here. Uh, a little more relaxed, I'd say. But also, had a little bit of a long day. But, so the Pios, they've still got to keep going. I've still got to keep going. 1-1. One, one. And low 2-1. 
Thank you, Hilliard, this inning's sponsor. They sponsor a lot of events for the Pioneers and are a great sponsor in general. Thanks again to the Hilliard. Two one taken for strike two. So now with that runner on, Serrano back ahead. Pioneers have surrendered three home runs this season. One of them had come off the arm of Serrano back in Jamestown, but he recovered to get the win in that game. And that one's popped up. Shemaleski under it, one away. Pod cool up with one away now. First pitch, ooh, a little inside, but strike one. Pod cool, two doubles and a fly out on a great play that was made by Herrera. One, oh, and two now. Serrano locating that one. That one gets in the dirt and away from Bartenstein. He eventually finds it. Lovejoy gets to second. Count two and two. That one's going to be driven out to deep right field. Should be made in time for the second out. That throw all the way is going to be caught by Shemaleski. He just holds on to it. Two-way runner now on third. Markman back up now. Markman takes strike one. Low, ball one. That one's going to be driven to center field. Odom gets under it. And that'll end the inning. One hit by pitch, but ultimately three straight outs afterward. That strands one runner. So now we're going to be entering the bottom of the sixth now. We'll be right back. More Pios baseball.
Hey, yeah, hey. I want to thank Bully Hill. This inning sponsor. Meanwhile, Brody Bartenstein grounds to third. Cannot beat the throw out by a couple of steps. Disappointing for Bartenstein. Hits the second ground out of the game. So, one away now in the bottom of the sixth. We're back with more Pios baseball. Kind of like how Bartenstein uh, interrupted my terrible singing. Odom steps back to the plate. 0 for 1 with a walk. Here's the first pitch to Odom. And high, ball one. Empty bullpen for the Brilliant Sox. Relatively empty for the Pios. Not sure if anyone was warming up before. And obviously, I have a feeling Coach Drum might eventually put in just a weaker long reliever or a position player as the next pitcher, just to try to keep his bullpen A-OK. -okay. They do have the game on the fifth. That one's going to be popped backward, three and one. Odom got ahead, but now that counts a little closer. That one's going to be lined up the middle. Base hit for Odom. He gets aboard with a single with one away. It sharply off the ground and rolls up for a deeper single. One away, Ethan Herrera back up. What can Herrera do here with one away? That one gets low, but Okazaki back on it, 1-0. One and one. Swing and a miss, one and two. And strike three. Herrera goes down looking. Looked like Odom might have tried to steal on that pitch, but I think he tripped and ultimately just went back to first safely. Two away now. That'll bring up Johnny Wall. Catcher and pitcher conference, I think, is concluded. Wall's going to get that one deep left field. That could get to the wall. Surely that brings home the Pios' first run. Odom. Rounding third, and he will score. Johnny Wall, a two RBI single, double. One RBI double, I was thinking two RBI single for some reason, but the Pios continue their streak of not getting shut out with a big play right there 
from the key third baseman, Johnny Wall. Jani Vaughn's going to get a chance now with a runner in scoring position to keep the Pio's offense going. A little activity in the bullpen. A side armor warming up. We'll likely see him next inning. Ball one outside for Vaughn. Huge play there for Johnny Wall, though. That one's line, and it bounces off the first baseman's glove. A run to the bag, and Kramer is there in time. That's a 3-4-1 ground out. One of the weirdest plays you'll see. But in the end, it's two hits, one run, one left the board. More Pioneers baseball up next, but the Pios bring home a run. More baseball after this. Serrano returns to the mound. Here in the top of the seventh, 7-1 seven lead for the Brilliant Sox. Swing and a miss, Reese missing that first pitch. 0 for 1 with two walks today. Checked up and held up 1 and 1. Two and one. Now if you want to watch a former pioneer who's active in the current MLB, all you need to do is watch a Giants game and see if they bring on that really tall dude from the bullpen. Sean Hell was a former Elmira pioneer. So, wherever you watch the MLB, you might see some former player from time to time. Who knows, maybe a few players in this year's roster could get to the MLB. 2-2 now. That one gets away. Count goes full. Swing and a miss, and that is a big strike out there to open up the inning from Serrano. And with that, I believe that's strikeout number 10 for the Elmira Pioneers tonight. Yeah, I was double checking. 10 strikeouts for the Pioneers. So we've definitely been showing off some stuff and recovered later on. One and one. We'll set up 
three strikeouts tonight. He's responsible for helping that total reach 10. But this time, the Utica legend puts one into the gap. Doesn't get all the way. He'll eventually be picked up by Herrera. However, Olstead gets to second as he decided to go for two and came up with it. That's a one-out double and puts a man on second. We see some action now in the Pios bullpen, but obviously they're going to let Serrano go as long as he's able to. Nick Ficaro will probably get the call, and I assume that will be for the 8th and ninth innings. Naturally, if the Pioneers are losing, they'll have a bottom of the ninth to play. Okazaki up. Actually, there's a pinch hitter in. Whoops. Nope, it's not going to be Okazaki. Number 10 steps up. Pepe Soto. O one one to Soto. Inside, ball, two, ball one. That one's going to be lined for a base hit. Soto comes in and makes a play, and it'll be an 8-1 ball game as that throw just can't come in in time. An RBI single on that pinch hit at bat. We see some more fireworks. They're further to our right. Can't get the camera for those, unfortunately. That one's going to be driven deep left field and caught for the second out. Forgot to update the graphic really quickly. Things have been going relatively fast. But now we'll be able to get it. 8-1 and 2 away. As Hen fl flew out that time. That brings up McKinley at the top of the order. McKinley's got a runner on first and two away. Ball one. That looked like it was close enough to potentially hit McKinley, but does miss him, thankfully. That one's going to be driven to the outfield. Odom under it and makes the catch. And with that, the Pioneers give up one run on two hits, one left the board. More Pios baseball coming up, thanks to Wegmans, who is this inning's sponsor. Let's enjoy the seventh inning stretch. Oh boy, okay, I just realized. How long was the K-Whistle still playing? Just when I changed back. Norman Coleman will enter the game for the Washington Brilliance Sox. We'll be right back.
Sharnetsky is now leading off for your Elmira Pioneers. We're back bottom of the seventh. Just had that seventh inning stretch. Sharnetsky 0 for 1 with an error as he got on base thanks to it. 1 0. Sees the first pitch from Norman Coleman, who's entered the game in relief, likely to close it out. And that is inside 2 0. That one's going to be popped up, and that should be the first out of the inning. Makes the catch. Shemaleski back up. Oh, I just realized Mike was a little loud for that lat bat. But one away. Shemaleski. I do hope I'm getting the pronunciation right. That's always caused me a couple of hiccups. Here's the first pitch. Inside, ball one. That one's going to be lined to center field. And that's the second out. So Shimoleski can't get his first hit here. He's put balls in play every time. Just unfortunate Babbitt luck tonight. Two away now. Eden Blake will return to the plate. Blake takes strike one. Here with two away. That one's going to be popped up and should end the inning. The catch is made in right field. Piles go down in order again. It's one, two, three. Coleman starts out his relief stint well. Top of the eighth coming up right after this.
Pioneers baseball back in the top of the eighth. Nick Ficaro enters the game in the bullpen from the bullpen. Lovejoy is going to be his first opponent. First pitch, ball one. Of course, we know Ficaro has got that submarine motion. One and no, one and one. Two and one outside. Now three and one. And ball four. Three and two, actually. I was certain that was ball four. And we do have some fireworks, although now there will be ball four to get Lovejoy board. Since it's not live stream, I figured I might as well not uh, do the fireworks afterward, but there are, of course, still some going on right now. Fourth of July weekend, I have a feeling we're definitely going to see some tomorrow night during the game, too. Strike one. That one's going to be fouled away. 0-2 oh, now. Some AOs going around Dunfield. 0-2 oh, now. For Hurt. And now the count's going to be 1 and 2. I do believe it's Hurt. He might have been pinch hit for. As I'm not sure if that is the same player. It might be Alex Columbi Or Golumbia. It's like a... It's a cursive writing on the sheet and... But either way, the number one is in here as strike three is going to go down looking. I do apologize, but uh, there's no online roster for uh, the Brilliant Sox either. So, can't just Google them as well. Runner on, one away. Podkol is going to get pinch hit for as well. A one count now for Mike Thiessen, number two. So we see some variants and some new hitters come in now. That one's going to be grounded to third, but foul as Wall eventually tracks it. 0-2. O2. Fouled away. Ficaro had one strikeout to start the inning. I forgot to do the whistle for it.
That one's going to be now grounded. This time it could be a double play ball. Blake Shemaleski, and they'll just get the one. Markman with might get another play appearance here. Yes, he will. He won't be pinch hit. He's got a single, two outs, but a sacrifice fly was one of those. Two away now with a runner on first. That one's going to be grounded over to the Shimoleski. Throw to first. Gets by Vaughn. It was going to be a very close play. It gets away. Picked up by Bartenstein. Runner coming home. They might have him in the pickle. No, they're just going to hold on to it. Runner gets to second. Runner's now at third and second with two away. That simply will be an error. I think again on Shimoleski, but... Definitely not just his fault. He had a very good attempt to try to get that ball home. See some fireworks out in center field. Two away now for Reese. Takes that one outside, ball one. That one nearly gets away, but Bartenstein stays in front, 2-0. Pios just need one more out to get out of the inning and help Nick Ficaro not surrender a run. Now, 2-1 count. That one's going to be driven foul. Two and two. Two strikes, two outs. Let's play the audio. Two, two with more fireworks. And now the count gets full as if the fireworks are trying to accentuate. This will let bad. Not the most stressful, but still fun to get a full count situation. High pressure with bases nearly loaded. Dunfield getting loud, 3-2. That one's going to be grounded hard to wall. Throw to first, caught by Vaughn, and that'll end the inning. Ficaro escapes the jam. In fact, it was just a fielder's choice and an error off an initial walk that put two aboard. Two will be left stranded. 8-1 lead. Pio's six outs remaining. More Pio baseball after this.
Bottom of the eighth, we're back here at Dunfield. McDowell is going to be on the mound now. Uh, from the writing of the sheet, I have no idea what his first name is. But either way, the right-handed pitcher is going to come in and be tasked with getting through the eighth, maybe ninth inning, although there is another player warming up. Leading off for your Elmira Pioneers, Justin Hanley. Tomorrow night, more Pioneers baseball. However, no guarantees it'll be streamed. If it's not going to be streamed, don't worry. It's going to be recorded, and you'll be able to watch it live once the game ends. Should be streamed. Hopefully, there won't be any issues. Now, first pitch here to Hanley. Ball one just spit high. Two and zero now. Outside, three and zero. Alongside the fireworks, it's a four-pitch walk to open the inning for Justin Hanley. Here comes Lucas Berube now with a runner on, no one out. Ruby now with the runner aboard. He's grounded out twice. Can he get on base this time? Swing and a miss, strike one. Ruby's going to get on base as that one drifts inside. Brody Bartenstein now has two runners aboard and no one out. Can this be the start of an almighty comeback for the Pioneers? No stress if they do or don't, but I think it would be very cool if they did. Fireworks. Absolutely going off like crazy in center field. That can replace the fireworks show tonight. I have a feeling we're going to see a lot more tomorrow night when the Pios play again. We'll keep you posted on their opponent when we get it. Swing and a miss for Barton, seen 0 1. Swing and a miss, 0-2 now to Bartenstein. On deck is Odom, top of the order. Foul back. And, oof, Bartenstein fooled with the cutter. Well, the cutting action on that pitch inside. Strike three. First out now. 
That's going to bring up Odom. Odom got a hit last time, and he scored the only run for the Pios. Now, can he help score runs off an RBI? Count 0 and 1. Steps off. I will say, when it comes to the players, I wonder how the fireworks might be distracting them. Whether they're at the plate, whether they're on the mound, all that can really play the mental game. 0 2 now to Odom. He definitely needs to keep alive here. We need Odom to be on the scene. O2. Fouled back. Odom's going to drive that one. Will it get behind? No, it's going to be the second out. That's the second time we've seen Odom get a good contact on the ball. But she's not able to get it behind an outfielder. Two away. Ethan Herrera is going to come back up. Herrera, three strikeouts today looking to improve. And actually, we're going to see a change. Two-thirds of an inning this time. And we are going to see someone new enter the game. So for McDowell, Medell, yeah, McDowell, I believe. That'll end his night. I'll have someone else come in for the final one and a third, potentially longer. At this rate, it has to be Caden Sullivan or Austin Orns. For Ovis. Two outs, two on. Yes, it's, I believe, Austin Orvis. Yes. So Orvis enters the game now. He's going to get the call here. Previously from Augustana University. Won the 2018 D2 National Championship there. So Orvis, his first opponent, is going to be Ethan Herrera with two away. Herrera is going to be tasked with trying to keep this inning alive. If he does, he'd most likely send Hanley home from second. 
could get Baruby going far from third first. And well, Ethan Herrera is going to get aboard. The first pitch gets away from Orvis. And obviously not on purpose. There's no bad blood between Orvis and Herrera to my knowledge. Bases are now loaded for Johnny Wall. And that is probably the least player, or the best player in this lineup tonight for the Pios. At the very least, if you look at PGCBL season stats. So you don't necessarily want a bases loaded situation with Johnny Wall. Tonight, Wall is one for three with an RBI. That one nearly gets away, but not far enough. One and oh. Wall swings, he went around, so it is going to be a one and one. That one's going to be lined up for a base hit. It gets by the shortstop. One run scores. Not fielded clean enough. Two runs will score. Runners are going to move to second and third. Johnny Wall with another two-out double. It's technically an errant throw. That's a single. But those two RVIs were from Johnny Wall. Hanley and Baruby score. It's an 8-3 ball game. A huge at-bat there that gets done field pumping. Well hit into left field, dropping down. Diving attempt from short, wasn't able to get it. Jane Ivon steps up now. Four, five, and six would be the runs that are currently on the base. Trying to get this deficit down, the Pios have four outs to work with. Vaughn swings and misses on the first pitch, strike one. If Vaughn can just get a hit here, it would help the Pios out greatly. He had a single back in the second inning, struck out and grounded out. He's one for three. That one inside. Ultimately, he will get away with it, though. One and one. Sharnetsky on deck. After him, Shimoleski. It could be Shimoleski, Sharnetsky, and Aiden Blake do up. Unless Drum wanted to come in and maybe for fun, pinch it someone like Wayman, someone like Marsh. Could be an interesting idea. 1-1 one, one, missed 1-2 one now. 1-2 and two for Jane Ivon. If you remove that first inning from the game, the Pios would be leading 3-2. And how different would that be there? That hit from Johnny Wall. Swing and a miss, though. Vaughn will go down to end the inning. One hit, two hit by pitches, two stranded, two score. That's the bottom of the eighth, top of the ninth coming up for the Pioneers right after this. And running onto the field is Nick Ficaro. You can tell he's excited.
Top of the ninth underway. Nick Ficaro is entering his second inning on the mound for the Pioneers. Taylor Olstead leading off the former Utica Blue Sox player. Get the first chance here. 0-1. Actually motion for a strike one. The board out there is wrong. I will say, from the fireworks, looks like we might have a bit of fireworks smoke coming onto the field. 0-2. Two pitches, potentially a little outside, but just clipping those corners from home plate's view. O2. Here's Ficaro. That one fouled away. Here are a few more fireworks now. 0-2 here. And the scoreboard having a serious skill issue out there. It reads 2-1. Now it's going to be a 1-2 count. It is not a 3-1 count as they have it. That first pitch was taken. That's strike one. That second pitch was then strike two. There was a foul ball. And then there was the first ball. Now it's going to be a 2-2 count. Two two. That one's going to be lined for a base hit. Olstead gets aboard with a single. That's his second hit of the game. He had a double last time up. He had turned a single into a double with a heads up on the base path. Now up is going to be Soto up for his second at bat. Came in as a pinch hitter and now has been playing that catcher. He had a single in RBI last time. Runner goes, and that's strike one. He jumped that, I'd say, as good as you ever could. Olsted now on second, with no one out. Here's now the 0-1 to Soto. Count now 1-1. One one. Low, 2-1. That one's going to be fouled away, two and two now. Inside, ball three. Also show you one other fun rehab story. It was Max Scherzer making a rehab start with uh, the Binghamton Rumble Ponies. As that one is popped and gets behind Vaughn. That'll likely score a run with the way it goes. It does. Runner back at first. So it's an RBI single by Soto. Just an unfortunate blooper there that evades Vaughn by a few steps. Olstead comes home. It's a 9-3 game. I like how that story got interrupted by a pretty important base hit there. Either way... With the Rumble Ponies, Max Scherzer. He had bought the team AirPods and also supplied them with a dinner totaling about 7,000 after the game. So, nice little fun moment for the team in Binghamton. Of course, pretty local up here in New York. Now, 1-0 from Ficaro. 2-0 now. Hen back up. Over 4 today. Uh, if I believe... I'm correct. With the exception of Soto, or Okazaki, he's the only player on this team to have not gotten a hit 
And he's the only player on the team to have not gotten on base yet. His current line score is 9-10-2 for the Br uh, Brilliant Sox. Count now 3-1. Pioneers, 3-5-2. And ball four. Two aboard. And finally, all the players for the Brilliant Sox have gone on base. That is going to bring up McKinley again. And five at bats today. He is two for five. McKinley takes that first pitch to center field. Odom tracks it, has to let it bounce. But he gets the force out at second. What a play from Odom to get it in in time. And in fact, that hesitation allowed him to pick it up on the hop and throw it in. So that's going to be the weirdest fielder's choice you'll ever see. FC 8-4. Gets Hen out. Soto advances. McKinley gets on. Runners now at the corners, one away. But a heads-up play there, and good throw from Odom to get the force out. First pitch taken. I believe it is strike one. That one's now going to be grounded, and it gets through the hole for a base hit. It is now a 10-3 game. Lovejoy gets his first hit of the game. Although he's gone on base quite a few times, thanks to hit by pitches and walks. Runners now on second and first. 10-3 lead for the Brilliant Sox. One out here. No one warming up in the bullpen. They're just going to let Ficaro try to finish this out. I also have a feeling that they won't care about a run-ahead roll at this stage because it's just the bottom half of the inning up next in the ninth. And, yeah, definitely definitely some firework smoke uh, crawling into the stadium. That one outside, ball two. Or ball whoa, one. But definitely the precursor to what we'll probably see tonight, tomorrow night, back at Dunfield, outside two and one. Three and one. Could see the bases get loaded here. And there actually is a little activity in the bullpen. And ball four. Number one whose name I could not find for the life of me is now aboard to load the bases. Here comes Coach Billy Wildeman, I think just talking with Ficaro, just trying to say, hey, don't worry about it, man. Get the final two outs and you'll be good. One away here, top of the ninth. Bases are now loaded. Thiessen now up. He came on to replace Podkul at first. Actually, here comes Xander Burt, so... Indeed, that'll be the day done for Nick Ficaro. So Xander Birch back and ready to go. Pretty sure we mentioned before or, but the lefty back in. He hasn't played in a couple days, but ready to go here. The 
course, big thing for Xander Birch. He's the nephew of former coach Tommy Birch. Being a pioneer runs in the family, and he's going to be ready just to get two outs and get out of the jam. See some discussions over with uh, that man on second, Lovejoy, and a few of the Pios players. But overall, it's a good night for the Pios team to face some pretty tough competition. Better than the guys you'll normally see in the PGCBL with, the, of course, the elite exceptions. Players like Nolan Sparks, who are clearly MLB bound in the future. But also, better than some of the other interleague games. Games from time to time, too. Thiessen now up with one away. Low, ball one. I think the one thing that Birch just needs to do is throw strikes. He doesn't want to walk in a run. It's not going to really affect the game, but still don't want to walk in a run. That's one of the most uh, disappointing things I think you can do at a mound to just have that happen. But he's able to get back on the count now with a 1-1. After that swing and miss, what can Thiessen do here with the bases loaded? And the dirt ball, too. That one's going to be popped. Should get down. In fact, that's going to hit the gap. One run will score. The throw will come in, and it'll actually keep the bases loaded. So it's an RBI single from Thiessen. Here comes Markman now. It's now an 11-3 lead. Austin Markman. It's one away. Strike one. That one's going to be driven deep to right field. It will bring home a run on a sacrifice fly, though. Runners are now at the corners. It's a 12-3 game. Reese back up now. Four runs have come home this inning, and this is the largest lead that has been held all day by the Brilliant Sox. We'll have a double at bat. They will have batted completely around the order if Reese is able to get on base here. A run will score on this wild pitch, though, and is now a 13-3 game. And they obviously won't go for a run-ahead roll unless things get much worse. Run-ahead mercy. But a little bit ironic, after scoring 13 runs against Newark, the Brilliant Sox put 13 runs past the Pios. Two away now. Runner home, runner on second. That one's popped backward. 0-1. Sorry, 1-1 one one because the first pitch was a wild pitch. Today, Reese has had five at-bats. He's drawn two walks, and he's been out the other three times. Foul back, 1-2 oh, two now. Two strikes, two away. <laughs> Here's the 1-2. And calling time. Oh, 2 Or 1-2. And 
They're going to say he got that strike out there. He went around. And that will end the inning. One of the most dire last chance saloons right after this. Bottom of the ninth. So Caden Sullivan takes them out for the bottom of the ninth inning. Got some heat on his arm. Also say note, he's a two-way player. Hit pretty well in college, pitched pretty well in college. And he's going to be called upon to get the final three outs here at Last Chance Saloon. Pioneers trailing by 10. But hey, we've seen crazier things happen. That's why we got to play the game. Get the three outs. Do up for your Elmira Pioneers. Eric Sharnetsky, Kyle Shimaleski, and Aiden Blake. Actually, we've got a pinch hitter. Oh, here comes Kevin Serrano. On deck, we're going to see Jarek Potus as a pinch hitter. I can see him warming up. Although I do believe Aiden Blake will hang on. <laughs> that is some heat. Strike one. I'll say that looks like maybe 90 from his arm. Fireworks smoke clearing away. I will say, though, it probably helps clear some of the bugs away, too. So honestly, it wouldn't mind if it hung around. 1-1. One, one. Serrano's going to get a line drive. Well hit. And not going to be able to field cleanly. It's a single for Kevin Serrano. Pinch hitting. What a hit, Kevin. Here comes Jarek Potus now. That one fouled backward 0-1. And after Serrano got a hit, I cannot tell you how much confidence that'll give Jarek Potist. We see some more fireworks over to the right. Past the right field wall. Outside, ball one. And strike two. One and two for Potist. And again, we're seeing some more fireworks all around. Runner goes. That one's going to be grounded. And I will say, Serrano on the hit, run and hit, is able to avoid getting into a double play. One away now on... 
the ground out from POTUS. Serrano at second. That's going to bring up Aiden Blake again on deck, Justin Hanley. Foul back. Strike one. <laughs> oh, two, as he got fooled at that pitch there. Bleak today, one for three with a double. That one's going to be grounded over to short. Serrano able to get to third, but Blake reaches first safely. Great hustle on the base path from Aiden Blake. Runners are now at the corners with one away. That's why I got to say heads up on the base path because you can run those out. You just got to hustle. You just got to hustle, and Aiden Blake was able to do just that. That'll bring up Justin Hanley with two aboard. A chance to really get something going. Swing and a miss, strike one. Hanley today, one, 0 for 2 with a walk. Can he get a first hit here? Foul back, 0-2. Hanley's going to ground that over to third. They get one at second. Throw to first is in time. That is the game. 13 to three. The Brilliant Sox win in this interleague match between them and the Pioneers. Tough night for the Pioneers, even though it won't be really recorded in any official book. The loss will go to Mason Smith. We know how good he is in the bullpen and on the mound. It's one unfortunate day here. Pioneers offense did well and was able to get three runs and seven hits, but 13 runs came home on 12 hits for the Brilliant Sox. But overall, a good day. The entire family or families were able to come out and see the Pioneers in action, which is always good to see as a lot of these Pioneers come from all over the nation. And you see them all coming out ready to shake hands. But overall, a good day and a good sight as well. Nick Reiser off his crutches that he'd been on for a while. Hopefully, that could mean a return sooner rather than later. But again, exchanging some fist bumps and good sportsmanship all around. No reason not to as well. I know both teams had a blast tonight. But a great game overall. In the end, it's going to be a victory for the Washington. Brilliant Sox. The Pioneers will take a loss. But they'll be back tomorrow and, of course, back on July 5th when it's a real PGCBL game. One where a loss will sting a little bit more than tonight. I'm Taylor Storthy. Thank you for watching. And unfortunately, because the stream died, you gotta watch this ending as part of the full replay. But we'll see you tomorrow night.